Hi, my name is Xu Han Hong. Today I'm going to talk about quantum query complexity with matrix vector products. This is a joint work with Andrew Charles and Tong Yang Li. In this talk, I'll start with the motivations, why we study these problems in these query models. And then I'll talk about previous results and uh, our contributions. Let's get started. Algorithms for linear algebra problems is a fundamental research area in applied math and computer science. Over the past years, people have been making contributions toward efficient algorithms for, for example, solving linear systems and determining basic properties such as trace, determinants, or more generally functions of the spectrum. Interestingly, the performance may depend on how the algorithm is given access to the metrics and the field operations. For example, about 12 years ago, Harold Hesedem and Lloyd gave the first efficient quantum algorithm for solving a exponentially large linear system provided a quantum state that encodes the instance can be efficiently prepared. In particular, on input a quantum state that encodes the vector B, the algorithm output another quantum state that encodes a solution X to the equation AX equals B. While this is an exciting achievement, it uses a property that the field of quantum mechanics is the complex numbers. It is not obvious how to apply the same algorithm when the task is to solve a linear system over other fields, such as a real numbers or a finite field. And also the HHL algorithm works when the algorithm is given access to an oracle that returns the entries of the matrix. It is unclear how to apply the same algorithm when the algorithm is given access to a different oracle. In this talk, we focus on specific query models, which we call matrix vector products. There are three variants we will discuss in this uh, talk. The first is called matrix vector products, which are input vector x. The oracle returns m times x, which is a vector. The second variant is a vector matrix product, which are input vector x. The oracle returns x transpose times m. And the third variant is a vector matrix vector product, which are input a pair of different vectors u and v. The oracle returns u transpose times m times v. You may want to ask why we study these models. There are quite a few reasons. One reason is that it is close related to a active research area called linear sketching. And also it is very related to optimization algorithms that uses the power method and the Hessian vector products. A natural question in the quantum settings is that can we achieve quantum speed ups when the algorithm is given coherent access to these oracles. By co coherent access, we mean that uh, the algorithm is given access to a unitary matrix, which computes a function, which can be either a matrix vector product, vector matrix product, or vector matrix vector product into another at register.
Before we dive into the details about our contributions, let's talk about the previous results. In the classical settings, in 2019, Sun, Woodrow, Yang, and Zhang studied the upper and lower bound of linear algebra and statistics problem with matrix vector products. In 2019, um, Breverman, Hasm, Xunchou, Woods, and Woolworth um, study a lower bounds of a linear regression problem with matrix vector products over the real numbers. In particular, they show that with this query model, the linear regression has a linear lower bound in the dimension of the matrix. And also in 2020, uh, Richard, Woodrow, and Drew study upper and lower bounds of linear algebra and statistics problems with uh, vector matrix vector queries. On the other hand, in the quantum settings, um, in 2018, Bang, Appledore, and Griblin uh, study a Simon's problem with a promise that uh, the subgroup hiding function is a linear map. They show that the additional structure does not provide further color speed up. In 2020, Li, Senta, and Zhang studied graph properties in the cut query model. In this model, uh, on input a cut of the graph, the oracle returns the number of vertices on the cut. It turns out this is a case of V and V where the pair of the vectors encode the partition of the vertices and the matrix is the adjacency matrix of the graph. Also in 2020, Montenaro and Shao studied parity queries for graph properties. The query model is indeed a form of V and V over a binary field where the left and right vectors are exactly the same. In this work, we study quantum query complexity for various problems with matrix vector products. We show that for linear algebra problems that we study in this paper, there are no quantum speedups. In particular for trace, linear regression, and rank testing, there are linear lower, quantum lower bounds. And because there is always a trivial linear algorithm that learns the entire matrix, this shows that uh, quantum algorithms do not provide speed ups over classical algorithms. On the other hand, we show that for some problems which we call statistics problems, quantum computers do not do provide substantial speed ups. For example, for determining if there are two identical columns, there is an exponential speed up. And also for majority of columns and parity of columns, we show that a constant number of query is sufficient quantum. Okay, now let's talk about our results. First, we show that with access to these functions in superposition, matrix vector, vector matrix, and vector matrix vector products are equivalent, meaning that you can simulate one Oracle model using a constant number of queries to the other functions. This is in contrast to the classical setting where these query models are not equivalent. In particular, from the previous paper, we know that there is a problem uh, for which the classical query complexity is strictly higher with VM than MV and vice versa. This implies that the VM and MV oracles are in general incomparable. 
And also we know that the VMV is uh, strictly weaker in a classical setting because there is a problem for which a classical query complexity is strictly higher with VMV than MV. And also it's not difficult to see that a VMV query can be simulated using one MV query. On the other hand, with access in superposition, the query capacities differ by at most a constant factor. In particular, we show that you can simulate one VM query using one MV query and vice versa. And also you can simulate a VMV query using a constant number of MV queries and vice versa. We proved this result uh, using a simple idea called fast kickback, which is also used uh, um, to give the, uh, for example, bernstein vazirani algorithm. And also the, uh, it's also used in the paper by uh, Lee Santar and Zhang paper about cloud query models. Now, what's nice about the quantum equivalence of this query model is that it implies exponential speedups. So the idea is the following, because we can, we can simulate a left query using the right query and vice versa, a quantum computer can achieve smaller query capacity by switching to the easier side. So for example, for determining where, whether there are two identical columns, we can reduce it to uh, determining where there, whether there are two identical rows and then make use of the classical algorithm for identical rows. This implies that uh, you only need uh, logarithmically many, uh, many queries to determine whether um, there are two identical columns and thus it achieves exponential speed up. And we can also apply the same idea for majority of columns and parity of columns. And then we show that uh, uh, for these problems, you only need a constant number of queries because it's known that uh, classically, uh, there are a constant, num uh, constant query algorithm for majority of rows and parity of rows. Next, we show that for trace, we prove a linear lower bound by viewing it as a spatial case of the Cosetta identification problem, which is defined by Paul Copeland and Parmesan in a paper published this year. The problem is defined as follows. For a group G and a subgroup H, the algorithm is given access to a unitary matrix, which is a group representation acting on the vector space B. The task is to determine which coset the encoded group element belongs to. Copeland and Parmesan show that for this problem, the optimal success probability of any T query algorithm is no more than the ratio of dimension of A to the dimension of Y up arrow, where Y up arrow is the induced subrepresentation of a irreducible representation Y. And A is a maximal subrepresentation of Y up arrow, such that the Europe content of A is a subset of that of uh, T tensor copies of vector space V. Trace is a coset identification problem because we can show that the MV oracle is a group homomorphism, and the subgroup H consists of matrices of zero trace. With this observation, we can establish a linear low bound for trace. The proof is presented in four steps. First, the rep of H are indexed by an M by, M by N matrix Y, such that one of the diagram element is zero. Then the rep content of Y up arrow consists of the set of matrices Y offset by a scalar multiple of the identity matrix. So there are Q elements in this set. 
On the other hand, the content of the unitary representation consists of matrices of rank no more than T. Combining these steps, we show that the intersection of the two sets has at most one element, meaning the nominator is at most one for T smaller than N over two. This implies that to succeed with probability more than one over Q, one must take more than N over two queries. Next, we show that for rank testing, the lower bound is linear in the dimension of the matrix. The problem is defined as follows. Given access to a matrix M through matrix vector products, identify whether the matrix is full rank or it has rank at most N over two. An observation to this problem is that for tall matrices, i.e. there are more rows than columns. The rank is n minus d if and only if the linear map hides a group of order q to the d. But just to remark that a quantum lower bounds for a billion hidden subgroup problems does not directly apply since uh, linear maps provide more structure to this problem. We show that quantum query complexity for rank testing is linear by applying the polynomial method. This is done in three steps. First, by Sky Aronson's results, the success probability of a T query algorithm is a degree two T polynomial in a set of binary variables. Since it is not easy to bound the degree of a polynomial of many variables, we can apply symmetrization to reduce it to a univariate polynomial. In this case, we average over matrices of rank M minus D. The resulting polynomial R is a low degree polynomial, i.e. the degree is no more than 2T. To establish a lower bound, it remains to show that for the algorithms that succeeds with constant probability, the degree of R must be at least linear. We show the degree of R must be at least N over five. And the algorithm that succeeds with constant probability must output one with low probability when it's full rank and with high probability when it has more rank. This set, uh, this set of the constraints, which are the red bars in the figure. Any polynomial that crosses all the red bars must have high slope between the first two red bars and this implies that the, there must be linearly many changes in directions. Combining this, we can show that the degree must be high. Then the above method implies that quantum query complexity for determining whether the matrix is for rank or rank A minus one is also linear. Since the square matrix is a full rank, if and only if the determinant is non-zero, the lower bound for determinant is also linear. Now we show that for linear regression, we can reduce the uh, problem from determinant. Observing that linear regression is hard as computing the element of the inverse matrix, if there is a sublinear algorithm for linear regression, one can determine whether the submatrix A obtained by deleting the first rows and the columns, the first column is full rank or not, provided M is an invertible matrix. Then it remains to show that for unknown A, we can produce a matrix N with high probability, which is invertible with high probability. 
The process is pretty simple. By padding random vectors u and v, and the random element a with at least a constant probability, the matrix n is invertible. In summary, in this talk, I was trying to share with you our findings about quantum query complexity with matrix vector products. In particular, we show that for linear algebra problems that we presented in this paper, we prove linear lower bounds. These problems include trace, determinant, rank testing, and linear regression. And also we discuss the relationship between these query models. We know that classically these query models are not equivalent, but the quantum query complexity differ by at most a constant factor. Furthermore, we show that the quantum equivalence of these models lead to exponential speed up to a few problems. For the future direction, can we give quantum speed ups or lower, establish lower bounds for linear algebra problems over the real numbers? The above lower bound methods use the fact that linear maps are functions over finite sets. They don't directly apply to the same problem over an infinite field, such as the real numbers. And also a related interesting question is whether we can give a lower bound for the quadratic minimization problem. The problem of quadratic minimization given access to a first order oracle is closely related to the linear regression problem. Thus, this is also a very related question to the subject we discuss in this talk. I'll stop here. Thanks for listening.